Okay, welcome to the next part of the 90% No Main Menu Storage Tutorial. Um, this will cover Shade Soul and also Monomon. I'm going to put them together because Shade Soul on its own will be extremely short. It might be a bit long with both of them, but um, I don't think it'll be too bad. So, I probably should have covered this in the Lurian tutorial because I can't show you now because Lurian's gone. But um, after Lurian, you can quick map, like just open and close to gain control earlier rather than waiting for the wake-up animation. And you just want to make sure that, similar to like when you did the quick maps in the Dream Nail sequence, um, you want to make sure the first thing you do is turn around as soon as you close quick map, and that'll prevent a white screen later. Um, but yeah, it, it's not... It's a very minor time save, but it's there. Um, so then you're just gonna, once you're up, dash over here. If you uh, did the room dupe, the elevator will be down, even though you took it up. Because the elevator that you took up wasn't actually... Basically, the, the active room when you took the elevator up wasn't the Lurian room, so the game doesn't remember that you took the elevator up, so it's actually going to be down, which is nice. So you're just going to dash over, hit the lever, inventory drop, and then come this way. However, if... Uh, if you didn't do the room dupe, the elevator will actually be at the top. But, like, same idea. Just take the elevator down until you can get off of it. And then inventory drop. And then you'll be here. So, you're gonna out of bounds and go to the left. I, uh, messed it up. <laughs> this room is always actually a bit longer than I'm expecting, so I was trying to account for that, but I've already loaded this room, so it's preloaded and, uh... I'm just making excuses. Anyway, out of bounds, go left, dash over here. It'll be, um, d depending on how you do it, basically it'll be seven or eight dashes. Uh, but it's like seven and a bit if you go straight from the load zone. But anyway, just dash until you're off. Seven or eight. And then, if you want, you can do a setup here, which is kind of neat which is to just nail the wall like so. And you can see that just barely puts me past this little spike that sticks out. And it's also not far enough out that I missed the load zone. So you can see if I just inventory drop from there, I hit the load zone. So you can just nail the wall, and that'll put you the perfect distance away to inventory drop. The only thing is, it it can be like maybe a bit scary to set up, because you can't just hug the wall and nail it, because you'd be sliding down and nail the wrong direction. So you do kind of have to just kind of like press up against it properly. And you can see, like, I could accidentally make the mistake of doing like this and then nailing, and I'd be way too far and I'd miss the load zone. So there is that element of, like, scariness to it. So if you don't want to do that, you can just, like, wait until you're past this or whatever and inventory drop here and hit the load zone. Um, and then the fastest way to do this saves a little bit of time over that nail setup I showed you is to get transition storage. Um, and what I do is I, when I get out of bounds, I dash once, and then I open map for the transition storage, and then I dash six more times. Um, and I'm not off the edge, or sorry, I dash seven more times. It's gonna be eight dashes. Um, yeah, sorry. So eight dashes if you do it this way. So you'll dash once, map. Seven dashes, and just don't, like, hold neutral after the seventh dash. So you just stay this distance away. And then when the camera makes the, uh, Watcher Knight's chest here, basically as soon as I can no longer see the Watcher Knight's chest, I start holding right. And with transition storage, that should drop me into the load zone properly. So I'll try to show that off. Yep, if I can get the out of bounds. So I held right a little bit earlier and I landed on the ledge, but, um, that's the idea. Uh, yeah, that basically, it, it's definitely better to be too early than too late, and so using the chest 
disappearing as my visual cue, I find that it usually works out really nicely, and I, I'm never too late. If anything, I'm too early, which is way better than being too late. Um, so, there's that. It usually works out nicely, though. I'm not going to bother trying to recreate it perfectly, because you get the idea. Um, so you got into this room. Now, um, coming up soon after Shade Soul, there is an option to do a massive room dupe that takes you straight from Shade Soul all the way to Archives. I have a separate tutorial for that dupe specifically. That tutorial already exists. It'll be in the same playlist as um, all these tutorials. And it's also just on my YouTube channel. So I'm not going to cover that in this video because it'll make this video way too long. And I think I say this in that, in that um, tutorial, but I'll cover it here as well just briefly, and this will be basically the only thing I say about that dupe. Um, if you're going to do that massive room dupe, you need to get at least eight hits of soul in this room. Uh, nine works as well. Nine isn't necessary, but um, it would obviously work. But you just need at least eight. So, um, yeah, just keep that in mind. I can kind of go over, since I, I don't show this room in that tutorial, I can kind of go over what I do. Which is basically... Hit this guy three times. This guy two times. And that guy three times. And depending on their positioning, those hits will look slightly different, but um, that's the idea. Is I do three on each of the small guys and two on this guy, because it's, it's a bit more annoying to get three on the big guy. Um... So yeah, let me actually just get rid of all my soul. Now, if you're not doing the dupe, it basically doesn't matter. You need to have enough soul at the end of this room to get float. And, like, I would suggest you get, let's say, six hits of soul. But really, as long as you um, have enough to get float, you're going to be fine. So just go through, you know, hit, make the obvious hits. But you don't need to worry about getting a ton. And then you're gonna hit this lever and get float, just like I just did. Get float while the gate goes down. You're gonna come over into this room. Uh, you don't need to jump. Like, don't jump. I just jumped to make sure I had float, because I know I turned around pretty shortly after getting it. So, this room is an out-of-bounds jump. Uh, what I do for this one is I hold left towards the, towards the room until... With, with big loads like this, sometimes you can see map closes in two stages, and I think I covered this in the, uh, but see how it, it stopped closing and then started again briefly? I covered this as well in, um, the False Knight dupe in that tutorial, but some, some loads have that kind of thing where the inventory stops and then starts and stops again. So I hold left until it starts and stops again, and then after I see that happen, that's when I, uh, turn around to the right and jump, and that's the setup I use for this out of bounds jump. If I can, uh, <laughs> if I can get an out of bounds. Apparently not. So, I actually... <laughs> I, I kind of didn't even do my own setup there. Because, because I know the timing of this load at this point. So I jumped a little bit before the open close happened, or the, the, the start and stop happened. But, um, that's, that is the cue that I used to use. Now I just kind of have the timing more in my head. But, uh, that is a good cue to use. Don't... I just kind of muscle memory didn't use it, but... It is a good cue. At least for my loads. Um, it might be different on yours, but that's, that's what I used to do. Anyway, if you, um... If you didn't, if you don't get the out of bounds jump, it's kind of slow just because you have to come all the way in here to get to the wall, to wall jump. But you can do a dash down and, uh, wall jump up and around. And this out of bounds, um, this one's gonna be fast. This room loads fast because it's small. But for this out of bounds jump, my, uh, my inputs are neutral, uh, for the whole out of bounds. So no, no direction, just the out of bounds inputs. And then after the room loads, I hold left and jump. And ideally, I will avoid hitting this little spike that sticks out. If you really want, you can even, um, just come out of bounds. Oh, not like that. 
I'm doing a bad job of the out of bounds today. But just get out of bounds. And you can try to like stand on this little lip here and then jump. So that works as well. And of course, if none of that, you can just dash down and uh, while jump hopping around. Once you're up here, you want to keep in mind there's this slope here. So you can see if I walk up on this slope and I leave it, I will get air walk. So just keep in mind that exists and you might get air walk. So it's going to be... I, I usually do four dashes and then a dash down. Um, it, if you just do four dashes and a dash down, you should be fine. Um, and I turn around before I dash down. But sometimes you'll get air walk. So if you get air walk, just uh, like start a dream nail, just like tap Y or whatever your dream nail button is. Or open close inventory. I think dream nail is slightly faster, but whatever. Get, get rid of air walk and then dash down. Just keep in mind that can happen. Um, and it'll be here. Um, and then from here, there's no slopes here. You can see flat. So you're going to need to dash down, and you can just dash across the floor. I'm just going to take a drink of water, and then... Hey, we'll explain this shade, so we'll clip. So, this trick is kind of annoying. It's, um... It takes some practice, and honestly, I still mess it up fairly often. But what you're going to do is um, come over here, take the elevator up, and you're going to hit this wall twice as you go past it. Don't need to worry about breaking it. You'll hit it a third time later. Uh, just hit it twice as you go past. And then once you're up here, send the elevator down again. And you want to make sure you pass this blue line. That's where your hazard respawn is. So make sure you come in far enough to hit here. Because if you don't, when the elevator hits you, you'll respawn down here at this blue line. Blue box. And uh, that's bad. You don't want to respawn there. So make sure you walk far enough right to hit this. It's not very far right, but just keep that in mind. Sometimes you can mess that up. And then you're going to send the elevator down. You can call it back up and just stand... Oh, I already have elevator storage. Hold on. Uh, let me get rid of that. I shouldn't have it now. Yeah, okay. So, um... Yeah, you're gonna get elevator storage. So just call the elevator back up and stand like kind of a little bit off the edge there. And then ideally, I kind of did it fast there, but um, let me get rid of elevator storage again, actually. So you stand a little bit off the edge. Ideally, the elevator starts carrying you up without getting hit, without hitting you. And if you see that happen, then you're good. You position yourself properly. And uh, you can do what just happened there, and you wait for the wall to kind of squish you into the spikes. Or you can just, as soon as you see the elevators lifting you up, you can just walk into the spikes. You don't have to wait for the wall to push you in. So, and then you'll respawn here, and you'll have elevator storage. Send the elevator down, and you can see it's kind of uh, jiggling me around a bit. But that's because now whenever the elevator moves, it will also move me, even if I'm not on it. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to clip up to Shade Soul. So, basically, we're going to send the elevator down, and it doesn't have to be all the way down, but it needs to be pretty close, and I would just suggest sending it all the way down. Um, so you're going hit to hit this lever, and then you're going to immediately jump. Just The elevator will move you up, but you want to get the extra speed from the jump as well. So you're going to jump up until you're about here, and you can stop holding A. And then you're going to come in to this corner. Uh, I don't need to be inspecting that. Come into this corner, and basically, it. I, I actually don't even know where I clip. I think I clip um, in, in this little nook here. Uh, it, but, yeah. So you, you want to clip, like, through here. And ideally, if you clip in the right spot, when you... Um, basically, yeah. As you can see, this is, like, a solid wall. A lot of walls in Hollow Knight aren't solid, so like if I just am in here, it's fine. This one will push you. So the goal is to clip in a spot that you get pushed out to the left, and you get past this door. Uh, you know, on the left side of this door. If you're not, then you'll just end up here. Which is fine, but you're gonna have to either clip a second time to uh, get out and try again. Or, if you're fast about it, you can dash down, and then the elevator will automatically bring you back up, and you can clip in on this side where you need to be. And uh, how you actually clip is whenever you're next to 
a uh, ceiling that you want to go through. You just open inventory, which uh, causes some freeze frames in the game, lags it a little bit, and that will clip you through the wall. So you're gonna basically, once you're at around here, you're gonna just mash map. Uh, is because you want to clip twice as fast as possible. Or not map, sorry. Mash inventory. Inventory is going to open and close faster than map, and that's important. Because uh, you have a limited amount of time while the elevator still moves up. So yeah, you're just going to mash map. You want to do it in a way so that you put push to the left of here. If you don't, you'll be able to see. You'll be able to tell that you didn't get it. You'll be able to see your horns. So you can either react and dash down and then clip on the right side, or you can just clip a second time and get out and try again. Um, so I will try to demonstrate. Oh, whoops, I didn't know if I actually still had elevator storage or not. Sorry. Yeah, so that's that's the ideal, is you clip twice through like that, and I got pushed to the left. Um, I can see if I can, like, kind of simulate doing it in a less optimal way. So I got pushed to the wrong side, I dashed down. Yeah, see, I wasn't even fast enough there. I, I was trying to do it, like, purposefully wrong, but, like, normally, if I get it in that way, I do it faster than how I just did it there. And so I put more time, but, like, yeah, I'm not even getting- okay, hold on, let me just- I'm trying to figure out how to purposefully get it wrong and not be too slow. But I think I can just do, like, this. So like that was actually even still pretty tight, but you can dash down and get around the uh, wall and get to this side, or you can just clip a second time and get up here. But ideally, you get pushed to the left by this uh, this thing, and then you can just clip up into here. So you're likely not going to be at perfect height, you're likely going to be in there. So just dash down, hit this lever, because you need to go through there in a second. Come over here, and uh, this is just, this is like the shade soul pedestal here, you just can't quite see it. So you're going to interaction storage. And then, um, well, you're going to press yes. But, uh, okay. This is going to be different if you're on a keyboard, because I think, well, it, it might be different. I don't, I, I, hold on, it's, sorry, it's gone because I interacted it and then didn't use it. But, um, if you're, if you use the, I think you can use, like, enter on keyboard to accept it, in which case you won't jump. So I actually, your movement will be slightly different. But if you just use uh, your jump key on keyboard, you should jump as well, and your movement will be the same as what I do. But um, you can do it either way. But basically, I'm going to turn to go to yes, and then accept. So, like, press it, so I'll jump. I'm not going to do it right now just so it doesn't actually happen. I'm going to put a save state, actually. But, um, I'll accept it, and then I'll be in the air, so then I'll dash down to get to the ground, and then I'll dash around here, and, and hit this soul jar, because you want the soul. And then basically, I don't have a precise timing for you, but, like, a little bit after that, open inventory, and you will have control. Because it's gonna do a, like, animation thing that makes you lose control, so if you open inventory at the right time, you get to avoid that happening. If you mess up the timing on opening inventory, you can just quick map and you'll gain control again. You just lose a little bit of time. So I'll try to demonstrate. So I'll, you'll be like here. Okay, hold on. Let me get to the... So you'll be like here. Okay, sorry. I do the soul jar after the inventory. Um, so... So I do the soldier actually after the inventory. I, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of rusty on my memory of what my exact strats are, but I, my muscle memory still had it. So yeah, dash over here, inventory to get control. If you miss it, you can just quick map, open close, and then uh, hit that. Now I left the room, so as you can see, I don't have elevator storage anymore, so it's not like moving me down properly, but that won't be an issue if you still have elevator storage. So, after you have control again, you've hit this soldier, you're gonna dash down. Uh, you'll hard fall if you land here. You can dash down and land on this instead if you want. Um, and then come here, in the elevator, and you're gonna hit this the last time. Oh, sorry, it's also, it also hasn't been hit already because I left the room. But you will have already hit it twice, so you're gonna hit this the last time, and then dash through. 
And um, there's a little seam in the ground here, you can see, this little thing that goes down. So if the elevator is still moving down, you actually will get stuck there. So you want to do a little hop when you get to that spot. So, um, you come down here, do a little hop to get over that seam, and then keep dashing. And then once you're around here, just jump up and dash into here. And, uh, if you're doing the dupe, completely different. You do none of that. You, you, you get Shade Soul, but everything after that is different. But that's covered in the dupe tutorial. So if you're gonna do the big dupe, uh, after Shade Soul clip is when you, this no longer applies to you. So go watch the big dupe tutorial. Um, so, we're not doing the big dupe. So we're gonna come here, we're gonna get transition storage. And we're just gonna do a dash storage across this room. Oh, whoops, my mouse is in a weird spot. And then, there's different strats for this room. The one I know is you dash until you're around here. You come up to this, and you get like a little bit of downward speed off of it. And then you're going to basically use that downward speed to dash into this platform at the right height to get airwalk, like so. If you dash into the platform, like, right at the height of the top of the platform, you'll get airwalk. You can be, like, a little bit below it, and the dash will, uh, push you up to the platform. And you can be a little bit above it, and you'll get airwalk. So just, you know, it, it's not too, too precise, but that's how I know it. So you just get this, dash, get airwalk, and just go up here. And after this platform that I just passed, you're gonna start holding left. And then, once you get up to this height dash a couple times, then jump into this load. So, that's how I do that room. However, sometimes people can find getting the airwalk tricky. Um, so, if you don't want to do the airwalk, you can dash over here. And I think the strat people do without airwalk is they come over to this gap, rather than this gap, and just go up here. Maybe not. I don't... It, they might use the same gap. I honestly don't know this strat, because I've never <laughs> done it. But, um... Yeah, I, it, there is a no airwalk strat, basically. You might use the same gap. Uh, yeah, probably. And then, just like... Again, after you pass this platform, you're still gonna start holding left. You're just not gonna have airwalk, so, like, you'll probably get to around this height and then just dash here. And do that to get up. Uh, you can experiment with that. Like I said, I, I'm not really familiar with that strat. I've always done the airwalk, but um, you don't necessarily need to do the airwalk. So in this room, uh, you, you can do this. I'll try and show this off. You can go this way, and it is faster if you go to the right. Uh, but it is very tricky. So very like that. So you you can do that pogo to get through, and at this point you can cancel float, by the way. Once you're up here, you can cancel float and go into this room. So that that is technically the optimal route for this room. However, very precise. I, I very much don't recommend it. Um, let me just give myself float again. And so if you're going to do that route, you should enter this room facing right as well. Um, but if you're going to do the other route, come up here, uh, dash down. Just because you want to touch the- you're not really focused on going left. So you just want to get to the ground as fast as possible. Dash gets you that. Um, and same thing if you do this way. Dash down as soon as you can. And then jump up and do the pogo. Um, but dash down. Go up over here. You're gonna bonk on this. And come over here. Like once you're past this platform, pogo. And dash. And get rid of float. So I'll, uh, I'll show you that kind of more fluidly. What it looks like, but... It's not too complicated. Um, if you don't have enough soul to get rid of float, you should. But if you don't, um, you can hit... Well, apparently not, because I, I think I killed him. But <laughs> there, there is an enemy here that you can hit to get rid of float. And then uh, make your way over here. And then in this room, you're going to... Uh, just activate the toll, 
And uh, there is a bench. You can take that bench and heal if you want. However, you're going to do that after you buy the stag station. And you can do fast look down for the faster um, bell. But basically, after you hit the bell, you have time to come over here and bench and then come back before the stag arrives. Um, I guess I didn't really cover the fast look down. But, um, hey, hold on. I do have a save state. It's an NMG trick, so I didn't really think of it, but who knows, maybe you never ran out of NMG. Um, so. There's Insta-Bell, which is a bit trickier, but basically, you just look down. And then you look down again, and as soon as that goes away, you stop looking down. I guess I, <laughs> if I'm not covering out of bounds of float in this tutorial, I don't know why I feel a need to cover that. But, uh, there you go. That's my, uh... It's my fast bell tutorial. And then you're gonna stag the dirt mouth. <laughs> so, here. You can make this wall jump. Uh, sometimes it's a bit tricky. If you accidentally like activate the elevator and then miss it, then you lose a lot of time. So, uh, don't do that. But you can just do that wall jump, or you can ride the elevator up. And then we'll jump up. Definitely don't ride the elevator all the way up. Um, but regardless, you're gonna we'll jump up here, hit that, and then leave. And um, one thing you can do when exiting doors like this is you can basically do a sub timing, but since you, there's no out of bounds to go to, you just get control earlier. And I messed it up, but uh, it saves a little bit of time. So just... Like that. You just get control a little bit earlier. And then same thing as when you were going to VS. You're going to just kind of cancel that early. Uh, so you can dash without hard falling. And um, if you don't have one cast with a soul right here, then you're going to get the rest of the soul you need off of that infected vent fly. You just need to have enough for, uh, for one cast. So if you don't have any, you can just like hit him and this, this tick tick, whatever you need. You can hit him a couple times if you have no soul. Um, but yeah, you're gonna hit, get up to um, one cast of soul as you get through this room. And then this is just a uh, gross drop. However, don't drop in the same spot you do normally. You're going to, from here, dash and dash to the middle uh, lane, I guess, to drop. And one thing to keep in mind is this guy can hit you. If you do this, like, fast, then you might actually get hit by that guy. Just drop on the right side of the middle lane. And then as you near the end, you can, um, you can either just, like, hold left to perfectly nicely inventory storage or transition storage drop into the, uh, load zone, or you can, uh, cancel the transition storage right at the end to make it a little bit less precise. That's what I do, because, um, if you cancel the transition storage to, like, make dropping into load less precise, then even if you miss dropping into load, you'll cancel your hard fall on the floor here. So, that's what I do. But, then you're coming into here. You get con okay, actually, this will depend. So, there's a, there's a small dupe you can do here. Um, so, the small dupe saves about seven seconds. It's, like, a little bit tricky. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess I, I recommend it if you're kind of looking to get a bit of a faster time, looking to improve your strats, and, um, and you don't really want to do the massive dupe yet, but, um, saves like six or seven seconds, I think. Um, so if you're not doing it, you're just gonna out of bounds. Except, don't, like, that's a backup. I got, I got it a bit late, so I could do that, like, wall jump out of bounds backup, but you can just do a normal out of bounds. And then, uh, drop down here. I'll cover the no dupe first, and then I'll come back, and I'll, I'll cover the dupe. Uh, let me put a save state. So, you can dash through. Oh, yeah, actually, that's true. Um, I guess you don't necessarily need three casts of soul if you're not doing the little dupe. Um, at least you still need three cat or you still need a one cast of soul. Three hits is what I meant to say. 
Um, but you don't necessarily need it in that first room of Crossroads, because you will get one hit on this guy here. So, I'm gonna enter this room. Take this route to get up here. Go under that infected bench fly, go under the gome, and dash through. Now, a couple strats you can do here. The fast strat is you go out of bounds. And you can land here. And you're gonna drop down and you're gonna do a slow fall. But, and you're gonna dash into that load zone. Some people find that pretty scary because um, the camera won't necessarily be following you. So you will ha kind of have to get a feel for the blind timing of it. And if you like do it too early, then you'll start to kind of lose a bit of time. However, the, 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 the other strat is very slow. So it's kind of, unless you do the slow fall up here, it's kind of hard to lose time to the other strat. But, um, so that's the, that's the ideal strat for that room is you do that slow fall. If not, you can do a slow fall here. Um, I had to jump there. You wouldn't want to do that. Hold on. I, I, I haven't done this in ages. But, uh, so come over to this platform. Make sure you're facing right when you start the slow fall. And then, or you can even start the slow fall, like, midair. But I assume if you're doing this strat, you're kind of taking things safe. So just start the slow fall on the platform. And you can make it under here. And then you're just gonna hug a wall so you refresh your dash. Um, don't dash horizontally. And just like continually dash down by hugging the wall until you reach the load zone. And then you're gonna out of bounds. It's not that much faster than dropping through the room, but you know, it is. Uh, so just keep in mind, there's some geometry here. This guy, and there's a few load zones. So, um, it, it can be a bit tricky to do this kind of fast, but I inventory drop until I'm like here, and then I hit this load zone. Um, yeah, or you can like do it slower, you can, it, it, the problem is if you don't inventory drop, you're kind of waiting a long time, so you wait until you that pass that load zone, that load zone, then you can inventory drop and you barely get anything. So, you know, it, it, it can be a bit slow if you don't do the faster strat there, but um, it's not too bad. And then you'll be in this room, and you're just going to go across this room. You can collect soul if you want. It's not too, too important. Um, yeah, I was trying to think if there's any minimum amount of soul you need to be at here, but there isn't. Um... You can have literally any soul here and be fine, I think. So, the easier strat for archives is, um, oh, uh, oh, sorry, actually, I never went back and did the little dupe. Well, actually, that makes sense, because it would end here. So, um, yeah, so this is where you'll meet up with the little dupe. I will now show you the little dupe. So, if you're doing a little dupe, you'll start back in this room. And here, instead of going out of bounds, you're going to get transition storage. You're just going to fall down and hit these spikes, and then immediately room dupe over here on the left. Um, so, the way you're doing that is you're just inventory dropping these spikes, and like you would for a load warp, you inventory drop in, you open close quick map, and you're just gonna hit this load zone as fast as you can. This is where you stop doing it like a load warp. You hit this load zone as fast as you can, and uh, you'll dash into it, and then you'll like be out here, and then you'll gain control, and you're just gonna mash right and dash, and then you'll dash back into it, and you'll room dupe. Um, and you'll be here. If you get like sucked back through the load zone, which can happen sometimes, you'll kind of, you know, get put back and forth a bit. But, um, you know, it, it's not too big of a deal. It doesn't actually affect anything if that happens. You just need, as long as you can break out of the going back and forth, you'll be fine. But once you're duped, you're going to go into this room. And what you're going to want to do is do it and a bounce and just wall jump. Or it might even be a normal jump. Sometimes it'll be a wall jump. Sometimes it'll be a normal jump, depending on what you do. 
Um, basically, that just makes the load not RNG. Because if you just uh, do nothing, you can see the loads overlap there a little bit, and that's you'll be inside that overlap part. Um, which is not ideal. You don't want to be there. So, you're going to do a jump slash a wall jump to hit the top load zone, which is the one you want. If you, if you accidentally hit these spikes, that's actually fine. It will, um... <laughs> it will automatically put you inside a load zone. I don't remember if it's RNG if you hit those spikes. Or not. Like, I don't know if it's RNG which load you get if you hit those spikes. But, um... Regardless, the, the idea still stands. If you get the good RNG, you'll be here. If, if it is RNG and you get the bad RNG, then you'll just have to try again to do the wall jump thing. And then you'll end up here. However, you want to uh, out of bounds here. It's fine if you don't get it like, first try. You can just go back and uh, out of bounds a second time. And this is the it's the exact same as this room not duped. The only difference is this ledge exists. Um, is a little extra ledge. So, like, don't be fooled by landing on this one. This is not the normal spot. This is the normal spot. And then exact same strat as unduped. You're just going to fall off and slow fall. And I messed it up, but, you know, don't do that. And slow fall, and you're going to hit this load. And again, you're going to need it out of bounds, but it's fine if you don't get it right first try. You'll just be, you'll be up here on this platform. Uh, so you're just going to jump back up if you don't get the out of bounds. And then you'll be here, and you're just going to walk back in, and out of bounds. And I actually failed it. So, um, one thing is that if you fail it and you think you got it, you might hold left and, like, fall down here. Um, which can be a bit sketchy. But just kind of... You can wall jump up most of the way and kind of feel your way around. It's not ideal. Ideally, you do, you do not fall down, but you can kind of make your way back up if you do. Um... But, yeah. <laughs> you can't get these out of bounds. Uh, but the idea is that you will get the out of bounds. And you'll do the same thing. Um, I, don't, I don't know why I didn't hit the load zone. I thought I needed to talk first, but I don't. This will be fine. So you'll be in here. Now, this is like basically the only scary part of this room dupe. Is I'll do this so you're gonna come out of this load and you need to hit this load now they're close which means if you do a normal out of bounds you're actually gonna fall past this one before you get before load zones are activated and you're just gonna fall out of bounds so you're gonna delay your out of bounds like you would for the the false night skip that i covered in the eventual spirit tutorial you're gonna try to make your out of bounds basically as late as possible so you don't see inventory close at all when you uh do the out of bounds and that will make you ideally uh, do that and actually hit the load zone you want and then it'll be here you won't be able to see but you're gonna dash over it's just a flat room like it's just you know there's nothing you can mess up really just dash over uh, when you're next to this you'll be able to see slightly so you can kind of tell where you are um, and you can enter I'm too far left but yeah enter um, so then you're at archives. Now, if you want to do the optimal archive strat, you will, okay, also now the, uh, the big room dupe will also be meeting up with us here. So anybody who just watched that tutorial, welcome back. This first thing I'm going to say doesn't apply to you. You're going to do the float method. But the faster method is you'll come in here, dash over here, no float, and you're going to get transition storage. And ideally, you don't get hit on your way down. And from here, you're going to drop off, shoot a fireball, and close inventory right after, which will give you sliding float. Um, like, so I actually close inventory before I shoot the fireball, sorry. And you're gonna use that slow fall you get from the sliding float to make it over here. And there's a hazard respawn trigger here. So once you, you'll usually, I don't think you can make it all the way. I think you're gonna have to wall jump up here. If you wall jump, just come over here, like past this little knob here on the top. And 
then dash into the acid to get rid of your slow fall. And you're gonna enter Umu. So that's the faster way. It's like 0.8 seconds or something. Now, if you want to do probably a little bit of an easier way. Oh, also I should I should mention this, I guess. If you uh, if you do get hit out of your transition storage, instead of doing the sliding float I did there, you're just gonna drop off the sledge and do a normal slow fall, and then the exact same thing applies. So, if you if you did the big room dupe, or if you just want to do a slightly safer strat, if you did the big room dupe, you'll already have P float here, and you'll have I think no soul. Um, if you didn't do the room dupe, you might have soul, but basically you'll get P float as you enter. Dash across, dash down, and then um, you'll you'll probably want to do some soul collection here. If you, um, I actually might cover archives in the big dupe tutorial. I honestly don't know. <laughs> um, I don't remember. I recorded that a while ago, but. Basically, you'll probably want to do soul collection, so, and even if you don't, kind of, you want to do the hits that I'm going to tell you to do anyway. So, you'll come in, pogo this jellyfish, and dash down, and then you can dash past this guy without um, getting hit by it. You can, you're fast enough to do that. Hit this jellyfish, up slash this one, and then here. And then, instead of doing the slow fall here, you'll have P float. I don't know why I have air walk, that's weird. Um, you'll have P float. Dash down. Cancel it at around this height. And then just get rid of your float. Um, and then, Umu. So. Ideally, you two cycle Umu. Uh, I don't really know how to do a good Umu tutorial, I'm realizing. This might be, like, kind of complicated. But, basically, my, what I do is I come up here, dream now, and then I wait on this, this little thing here, and then for the second phase, I come down, or for the second attack, <laughs> I come down and wait on, on this little sticking out knob thing, and then for the third attack, I wait here. And then after they've done following me, I come over here and I dream nail him as it's on its way over to me. Because I, I do the big dupe so I don't have enough soul. You might already have full soul and you won't need that dream nail. But I dream nail him. And then the damage rotation you want to do is... It's a, it's a bit different from the N NMG damage rotation. Because you can't side slash Umu. You will get knocked back really far on this patch. So you can only do up slashes, which makes it a bit more awkward if you get an NMG damage cycle. So what you're going to do is fireball, three hits, fireball, three hits, two fireballs, basically. I don't have the soul because I wasn't actually hitting anything there. But that's the damage cycle, and ideally that will get you um, a double hit on one of those last fireballs. So I'll try to show you that. And then second cycle is a lot less precise. Um... Sorry, I messed that up a little bit. But come over here, wait on this thing. Wait on this thing. And then I wait here. And just dodge the attacks. And then, while Umu comes towards me, I get the rest of the soul I need. And then... Do the damage cycle I just told you about. As you can see, I do do side slashes at the end there, and that's because I don't need to worry about being close to Umu um, for those ones. But um, you you definitely want to up slash for the first for the first nail hits, and for this cycle, a lot less precise. You've done most of the damage you need, so I just come over here and wait on this platform, and then I come around here and wait on this platform once the attack is over. And then I'm just going to jump off and fireball. Like so. Um, now, if you got no double hits with any of your Shade Souls, you're going to need an extra nail hit. So you can see that I did... Um, I jumped off this, and I, I nail, and then I do the two fireballs. That first nail kind of helps the fireballs double. 
but if you don't get any doubles on, on either of the phases, you're going to need one more nail hit. So you're going to do that fireball twice, and then come over here and nail hit it. Do not fireball a third time. You need this soul left over. Um, <laughs> and by the way, if Umu does an extra attack, I'm sorry, I got nothing for you. Um, for the second phase, it doesn't really matter, but for the first phase, I don't have any backup. I, <laughs> I'm sorry, I never labbed out a backup. But I'm sure you can find something if you get at the Umu fight. If not, uh, you're, you're in the same camp as me. Uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, again, like I said, vitally important. Make sure you do not use up your last cast of soul. You need this, because now you're going to get P-Float by dunking into the acid, because you just have float. Uh, you need to turn it into P-Float by taking damage, so that's the acid dunk. And you come over this way. Um, and you can kind of, like, the door, if you do this fast, the door will still be closed, so you kind of just jump up and wait by this door, and then you're gonna dash down. Um, and you can kind of, I, I wasn't doing anything there, because I was trying to talk, but that's what you don't want to happen. You can kind of, like, you can wall slide down this and, like, do this if you really want to be safe, but, um, kind of the ideal situation is you dash down, and you just kind of wall cling at the very end and then dash. I'm gonna do this little wall jump here to get around here and then you keep this speed going. Dash down. Talk to Monomon. And, and don't don't get rid of P-Float if you have extra soul, by the way. Um, you, you normally won't, but there's some occasions where you do have extra soul here. Don't get rid of P-Float. Um, you're gonna interaction storage on the Quirrell dialogue. And then that way you can just wait over here. And then basically when I can start to make out Monomon's eyes on their mask, that's when I start the dream nail. I did it a bit later than I normally would, but um, that's my cue that I use. I think if you start the dream nail a bit too early, you can actually lock yourself out of dream nailing. If that happens, you're going to have to acid dunk to get it back. Um, but anyway, once you're in here, do the same thing as at Lurian, where you quick map to gain control faster. I can kind of show it off, but it's not too complicated. You're just gonna um, quick map, and then you're gonna dash, and then dash down, and then dash twice. I've experimented with um, something else, actually. I've not timed this, but I've experimented with doing dash down, like come off the edge a little bit, and then you can get three dashes. I feel like it's probably faster. It's where you just, so like, dash, and do that. That seems like it's probably faster because you get the extra dash in. I haven't actually timed it, but I don't see why that would be slower. So there is that, if you want to do that. But basically what I'm trying to say is don't do this. That, don't do that. Um, so, you'll be here. Kill Monomon. Don't worry about being, like, on the ground or anything, by the way. You can just, you can focus midair here. It doesn't matter. And then you're done, Monoma. And I guess since I didn't cover this at the end of the Lurian video and I regretted it, um, you can you can do the quick map thing here again. I actually don't like it because you have to turn around, like I said, or else you get a white screen at Hera. So you have to turn around first thing if you do the quick map. And that kind of messes up my movement, because my movement is I jump up here, like that, and I kind of hit the side of that. But if I turn around, then I'm like pressed up against this, and then I get hit stuck on this lit here. So I don't really like the turnaround. I guess you could, like you could just do it and then kind of do the same movement, just by jumping out a little bit first. But, you know, I, I don't like it, but it is faster. So if you're better than me, you should do it. And that's the end of a really fucking long Monomon tutorial. I'm <laughs> sorry that was such a long video. Um, Hera will be shorter, I promise. And yeah, I'll see you for that one. We're getting near the end of the game.